In this video, we're going to be learning about immunity. In particular, primary and secondary immune response, passive and active immunity, and herd immunity. The first time a pathogen enters the body, this activates a white blood cell called a phagocyte. The phagocyte consumes the pathogen and turns into an APC, an antigen-presenting cell. The APC then activates a T helper cell. Once activated, this T helper cell will activate T killer cells, which will go and destroy infected body cells, activate more phagocytes to go and look for more pathogens and destroy them, and also turn into T memory cells. At the same time, a B cell is floating through the blood and it has caught an antigen. The T helper cell will find the B cell and bind to it. This stimulates the B cell. It divides by mitosis to make more copies of B cells, which then turn into plasma cells and B memory cells. The plasma cells produce antibodies which go and destroy the pathogen. Plasma cells last for a very short period of time. By the end of it, the pathogen has also disappeared. However, in the future, the same pathogen could re-enter the body. Now, instead of going through the long process of APC, activating T helper cell, turning on B cells, since we have B memory cells, they can just simply turn into plasma cells. The plasma cells are ready to produce antibodies and take out the pathogen. In the second infection, the person is less likely to feel ill because the plasma cells will produce lots of antibodies to take out the pathogen before it can damage the person's cells. In this scenario, we can say the person has become immune. So to summarize immunity, it's when a person is able to resist sustained cell damage by producing lots of antibodies in a short period of time. And this is due to the presence of memory cells. Now with the immune response, it's very common to be given a graph like this, amount of antibody in the blood and time in days. So let's say at this time, we have the initial exposure to the antigen. So this is the first time this particular antigen has entered the body. The concentration of antibodies produced will look something like this. We can see there's a small rise in the concentration of antibodies. This is because plasma cells were produced in the first response. Once the infection is cleared, the concentration of antibodies drops back down. Let's say in the future, the person is exposed again to the same antigen. This time, the concentration of antibodies will look something like this. This is called the secondary immune response. Notice the differences between the primary and secondary, mainly that the secondary immune response produces antibodies much more quickly and also in greater quantity. This is thanks to the presence of memory cells. We could say that at this point, the person is immune. Now with immunity, the words passive and active come up a lot. So let's compare the differences between them. Remember, immunity is all about antibodies. In active immunity, your body makes the antibodies. Whereas in passive immunity, antibodies are given to you. At the same time, we could have natural and artificial immunity. Natural refers to events that are part of the development of an organism. Whereas artificial means external sources that are not necessarily part of the organism's life cycle. So here's some examples. Let's start with active natural. An example is getting infected. We know that getting infected by a pathogen is part of the natural life cycle of an organism. It's bound to happen. 
when an organism gets infected, this will trigger the immune response and produce antibodies. Moving on to passive natural. An example is breastfeeding. During breastfeeding, antibodies in the mother's milk are given to the baby. We know that breastfeeding is natural. And at the same time, this is passive because the baby's body doesn't produce the antibodies themselves. It's given from the mother. In addition to mother's milk, antibodies can also be transferred from the mother to the baby during pregnancy through the placenta. Okay, moving on to active artificial. Let's say somebody gets vaccinated. A vaccine can contain a whole pathogen or simply just the antigens of the pathogen. In either case, this will trigger the person's immune response and therefore the production of antibodies. Finally, in passive artificial, the organism is simply injected with antibodies. Okay, some final differences between active and passive immunity. We can see that active immunity requires exposure to the antigen, whereas passive immunity does not. Active immunity involves the immune response, meaning the person's body has to produce the antibodies. Therefore, it will take time for immunity to develop. Passive, on the other hand, is much faster, simply because the antibodies are given to the person straight away. So passive equals immediate immunity. Now, although active immunity takes a long time, it will eventually produce memory cells, and these memory cells will also stay in the body for a long time as well. Therefore, active immunity lasts for a long time. On the other hand, in passive immunity, since it does not involve the production of memory cells, once the antibodies are used up, they are gone, meaning it only lasts for a short term. Okay, moving on to vaccines. Now, vaccines are good for you, but also for others around you. Let's say we have two populations. On the left side, we're going to vaccinate almost half of the population. On the right, no one's getting vaccinated. Let's say one person gets infected in each population. How will this affect the spread of the pathogen, considering the population on the left has had a lot of people already vaccinated? So we can see that the pathogen spreads to those who are not vaccinated and therefore not immune. However, on the right population, the pathogen keeps on spreading. So we can see that when people are vaccinated, not only does it protect themselves, but they also act like a shield and prevent the pathogen from spreading through them to other non-immunized people. This effect is called herd immunity. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.